Let's be honest, it was a terrible night last night. It was a terrible night for women, for children, for the hundreds of thousands of, of hardworking immigrants who make this country go, um, <laughs> for health care, for our climate, for science, for journalism, for justice, for free speech. It was a terrible night for poor people, for the middle class, for seniors who rely on Social Security, for our allies in Ukraine, for NATO, for the truth, and democracy, and decency. And it was a terrible night for everyone who voted against him. And guess what? It was a bad night for everyone who voted for him, too. You just don't realize it yet. And I mentioned this earlier in the show. You know, in the same way that people, um, you know, give up sugar um, or, or alcohol, tea, cigarettes, whatever. I reckon that for an awful lot of Americans, they they've given up on on, on a type of media that lazily we've called the mainstream media for a while. They're not the mainstream media, they're the old school media, they're the access media, they're the narrative media, they're the dominant media, because they, of course, did everything they could during this campaign to scandalise every little thing about Donald Trump. The reality was that was nowhere near where people were in this country. Now, that doesn't mean Trump is perfect and must be, you know, covered like a North Korean leader. But am I right in feeling that for a lot of people, uh, they're just done. They're done with the media and they're never going to interact with it again. They're going to get their news from people like, uh, like you in places like YouTube. That's exactly right. That's one of the most gratifying parts of today is that the, the leftist media is realizing they don't control the conversation anymore. We're not listening to them anymore. The American populace did not buy that he is Hitler or a fascist or a white supremacist or any of the nonsense. 10 years ago, I think the media could have pushed this narrative much more effectively. There was not as much competition. They were dominant. They had a monopoly over the sharing of news. 
And now it's a whole new world. And that is why you're seeing some of the reaction from people like Jen Psaki over on NBC, who's formerly of the Obama, of the Biden White House, saying what we really need to do is crack down on these alternate forms of information um, who need to be regulated just the same way we are. You know, those of us who have these very high standards where we push Russian collusion hoaxes, they they need to rise up to our standards if they're gonna be th this important uh, contributor to the national conversation. Well, you know what, Jen, you don't control that. <laughs> you didn't win anybody uh, that could govern us. And by the way, even if you did, you couldn't because there's this pesky thing called the First Amendment. What you're feeling is panic at the loss of power and control. And you should be feeling that because you've had it for far too long and you did not wield it responsibly. So I think you're absolutely right. I mean, the future of media for a long time has been individual relationships between consumers and I think individual news figures or podcast hosts, whomever you find trustworthy. And most people have a diet of a couple or a few. And it is not these corporate controlled entities that push their agendas on you from above. And they've never been so weak and non-credible as they are today. And that's yet another victory of the Trump win. Let's look into the future. What is the number one thing that you are most excited about, about the early days of a Trump term? Close the border. Close the border. As, as concerned as I am for our girls' sports, and it's right up there, almost my top issue, but the border's number one. People are dying. I mean, these are bad guys who are crossing that border from terrorists to criminals to rapists, and they cannot be allowed to keep coming in here like it's a sieve because once they get in here, we never get rid of them. And that's my my number two most most uh, excited. That's the number two thing I'm most excited about, which is the deportations. Not not of the guy who came ten years ago and married a woman and they're living peacefully. That guy's not going to get deported. It's of the bad guys who have come here criminally, who get caught, and then they're not deported and they're not even handed over to ICE because we have these sanctuary cities that won't cooperate, all of which Trump is going to crack down on. He's promised that he will. Those people need to be sent back home or out of the country. We need to go full Aussie on them. What, you guys understand how not to deal with these people, and we need to take a lesson. And I think President Trump is committed to it, and I can't wait to send them back to Venezuela. So if they want to commit more crime, they can do it in their country of origin and not in our towns and cities and at the expense of our kids. It's a disgrace that Biden and Harris let this go on as long as they did. My only concern and hope is that we change power in time to undo it. Megan, thank you for taking us on this journey as we I think at times we're walking on eggshells, but the reality was the American people were, were headed only in one direction, and it's the direction that thankfully you and I have been talking about for a very long time. We love you, Dallin. I look forward to seeing you uh, again next week back in the man cave. Oh, thank you, Paul. It's a glorious day. Enjoy Washington, D.C., and enjoy what feels like the dawn of a new day and freedom. I mean, ironically, it, that was her motto, but it's what Trump is going to restore in the United States of America. God bless, God bless the USA. Megan Kelly, you can find a show on Sirius XM or go and find it on YouTube.